we are reminded of a saying earlier it was only prevention 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 because treatment was not available so prevention is the only treatment that was the slogan therefore it became treatment as prevention so today major hiv control or major tb control has been happening because of treatment so you treat make them undetectable make them uninfectious so that the infection doesn't go to the next so what is important about early diagnosis tb is earlier the diagnosis that ensures earlier initiation of treatment and thus reduces the chance of further spread of the disease in the society uh, there are crowded slums there are uh, transport system schools colleges public places markets where if a infectious person goes that person can transmit infection to many other people so if you look at how it helps personal it helps slow down progression of the disease in family and community it prevents further transmission early diagnosis of recombinant resistance and if you are able to do drug sensitivity testing that helps decide appropriate treatment as well as provide uh, or prevent further resistance of those particular uh, drugs and important of early diagnosis of hiv to the personal level is a preventing opportunistic infection progression of the disease improves quality of life <coughs> chances to become undetectable faster and particularly the newer drugs like dorotegravir ranitegravir they they make the person undetectable within 2 to 3 months period so if somebody is planning a pregnancy or somebody is pregnant you want to stop mother to child transmission somebody have just got married they you want to stop uh, transmission in their, their uh, relationship one will so those kind of drugs are very important partner prevent new infections of by transmission and society especially from key population currently uh, the key population earlier we used to talk only about sex workers now they are they are bisexual people after the uh, uh, section uh, uh, has been repeat 377 there are a lot of people coming out in open we uh, we never see that kind of population earlier probably they were scared of coming out uh, i practice in a place called uh, uh, in a near bombay at grant road and i asked some of my patients who are coming with now msm i said where are your places of encounter they have 50 60 partners in a month so you don't need any place for encounter only for male female sex you need place for encounter for men doesn't need any place i said what do you mean i said there is a theater which is hardly 1 foot diameter from my clinic and that theater is inhabited only by msm population so all the film is on and all activities are on in the theater so that kind of scenario has changed so if we diagnose them early put them on treatment early we have prep we have uh, uh, pp then only we can prevent further infection and why it is important to prevent as early as possible or diagnose as early as possible just giving you a classical example how how hiv spread how hiv enters the body how much time it takes to go to different organs so day zero it is exposure only at the mucosal surface zero to two virus is collected by the dendritic cells and carried to the lymph node so within 2 days the virus reaches the lymph node within 4 to 11 days hiv replicates in cd4 cells and releases into blood so by 11 day it is caught in the blood everywhere and uh, day 11 it is virus spread to all other organs we are talking about hiv entry we are not even talking about the hiv detectability so even before detectable on a simple test the virus goes everywhere inside the body and when it goes everywhere inside the body from there it will spread to anybody who comes in sexual contact or blood transfusion so why what is required for early diagnosis is varied range of testing settings or strategies there they can be voluntary people will come for voluntary testing based on clinical suspicion based on partner testing uh, one partner is coming in you want to test other partner or contact tracing antenatal clinic which is happening very well in the country pre operative all private sector is doing 100% pre operative uh, check it may not be in the interest of the patient it is in the interest of hospital but pre operative check is happening and blood banks now there are we need to innovate also in testing so i'm going to bit of universal testing if you look at nanco guideline uh, that gives open uh, uh, forum for any doctor to check anybody but there are almost 15 16 or uh, uh, strategies where the person can be checked so basically it is universal uh, testing but it is not called universal testing pre marriage testing 
rather than matching horoscope or astrology, we need to match health score. It should not be only HIV testing. It should be uh, those infections can, that can be transmitted to conjugal relationship or those who can be uh, because of uh, vertical relationship. So, uh, if you do those four, five, six tests as pre marriage check, you can prevent a lot of infections. Nowadays, earlier we used to propagate positive, positive marriages. Now, because people are becoming undetectable faster, there are more marriages are happening among positive and negative couples. Uh, blood banks, blood banks doing a wonderful job, but linkages are not happening properly. In most blood banks, particularly in a medical college setup, linkages are fantastic. Linkages by me, it is not only for HIV. If for hepatitis B, somebody is born negative, they are not offered hepatitis B vaccine. The vaccine cost is very low, you know, almost if government buys at 100 rupees, they can buy three all three doses. So that has to be done. Both public and private sector should report hepatitis B, C and HIV. Integration and relabeling of ART center in a non-HIV terminology. If we say a person is going to ART center or HIV center or HIV clinic, you say you want to prevent stigma and discrimination, but you dis uh, uh, stigmatize that person that he is going towards there. So we need to have different terminology. Self-testing and home-based testing. Now, a lot of people may not be interested in going to ICTC or any hospital. So that home-based testing, all what it is happening, that should be encouraged and we can have uh, checks and balances there. Uh, testing of sexual assault victims and perpetrators. Any type of sexual assault, we uh, put them through forensic checks, police checks, all record. But we don't look at HIV status. We don't look at hepatitis B or C status. A perpetrator could be infected with multiple infections. So uh, even first dose of PP should be made available in police station or in, at the medical setup where the person is going to be taken for a checkup. You need, uh, need not give a four month of course, but the first dose is very important and subsequent doses can be decided by ARD center. So earlier things were street play, exhibition, etc. are still happening, but that is not very popular nowadays. Uh, I, I don't think that anybody with a qualification would go in the garland of Pratom in the rental area where, where, where I could go. Now people would be interested in social media. So uh, what has happened? that HIV awareness was boomed around 2000 till uh, up to 2005. Thereafter, HIV awareness went down because the focus of government was shifted to HIV treatment, ART. And now the focus is on uh, viral load testing. So, majority of the fund will be uh, consumed for ART, viral load testing, setting, uh, setting up all those setups. So, very little will be available for awareness. So, what has happened? Those uh, children, which were uh, around uh, five, six year old, around 2005 or so. Now they have grown up. They have not seen the high profile campaign. They have not gone through that grilling. grilling. So when we get that MSM or high risk behavior population now, they are highly educated. They are IIT and they are doctors, they are uh, MBAs, but they know very little about PEP, PrEP, nothing. So we need to look at how we can teach them and that is different connects. Like there are some uh, uh, sites, there is a Tinder site, Tinder site, then there are only for MSM population there is another site, international. So people put in that I am traveling so to do such and such place, can I find a friend there? And they can find a friend, but we are not able to find that person for taking precaution. So we need to connect to them and we are trying our level best, but it has to be done in a very big way. So we need to do that social innovation and awareness campaign to detect cases early and catch them young as, as soon as they are uh, going to a sexually active age group before that they should be tapped so that they are uh, prevented from any kind of actions where they can get infection. Now when we are talking about detecting early whether it is a TB or HIV we should have uh, some techniques or some kind of system by which window period can be reduced. So there are uh, the, the, the five generations of HIV test have come. The uh, test can be now detected at even three days with land that. So if we reduce the uh, window period, even though some expensive tests are there which cannot be done for mass testing, but even fourth generation, fifth generation testing for HIV, uh, which are spot testing also, we can detect the patient around three weeks, four weeks, six weeks. We don't have to wait till three months. So if you do that, uh, you detect early, treat early and prevent early. Importance of early diagnosis in HIV is in pregnancy, you can prevent mother to child transmission. It can be brought to zero. 
in my clinical setting in last 7 years 170 children are born not one is positive so if you detect early you treat them early you don't have to do even elective scissor section which we used to propagate earlier if you want you can do early infant diagnosis start treatment because the majority of the children which may succumb for mortality or morbidity is in the first two years of age and uh, earlier diagnosis was only at 18 months so if you di do diagnosis early you can prevent them and there are children which are born from mother to child transmission they are marriageable now they are 25, 26, 27 and they are still surviving and we can still see that they can live a full life in case of blood transfusion that can reduce the window period we propagated earlier uh, pool testing pooling of 10 sample if pool is positive you test all 7 or 10 individually in most of the blood banks all over the country the HIV positivity rate is 0.3% to 0.5% so out of 200 one is semi positive so if you do pool testing of 10 only one pool in uh, 200 will be repeated so 10 testing plus another 20 testing for 200 you require only 30 tests so by that way you can reduce the cost and you can do uh, uh, most forward tests like that undetectable is untransmittable that has become an equation all over the world earlier in the wire load testing we used to see undetectable we used to say if wire load is less than 20 or less than 4, 34 or less than 40 depending on the test you are using that person is undetectable after the newer drugs which have come dolutegravir within 2 to 3 months the patient become TND that means target not detected when you say undetectable that is less than 40 copy the copy can be 39 or copy can be 1 or 2 but when you say TND that means not a single copy so that kind of I almost uh, when we are running uh, about uh, 24 sample more than half the samples are TND so if, if you make them TND they cannot transmit to a wife also so nowadays those who even never thought of becoming mother or uh, having a child they started uh, they said that if it is TND then we can have a child so uh, rather than going for uh, artificial insemination and other methods now they are having their own children so when we are Looking at undetectable is untransmittable. This 1990-90 that will also help, and uh, the, the, this 1990-90 is going to be escalated to 95-95-95 because uh, within one year we are going to finish that. And uh, scientifically, if every PLHIV is on ART with viral load suppression, the risk of HIV transmission is negligible. So newer infection we will not see, particularly in the clinical setting where all of them are not treatment. Important point of care testing. Now, when you talk about early diagnosis and that to everywhere, whether in private or government setup, we need to have point of care testing. That can be for diagnosis, monitoring for CD4 or viral load. Actually speaking, we bought an uh, expert machine for TB diagnosis. Now, TB diagnosis is provided free of charge everywhere. So, all of our samples goes to other places for uh, expert testing for uh, uh, TB. And we are using that expert test for viral load. Because some patients want to report in one and a half hour. Sometimes we want to decide whether we want to shift them from one treatment to another. So that can be done within one and a half hour. So that kind of point of care is available for viral load. TB, CBNAT, Gene Expert, both to, uh, both to both TB and HIV program. So as I told you, Gene Expert machine can be used for uh, TB diagnosis, HIV, Hepatitis C, Chlamydia, Gonorrhea, a lot of tests can be done. And within one hour you get perfect result. The applicability of the point of care is uh, HIV detection and ICTCs uh, already spot tests are being done that is also point of care only private clinics, hospitals, blood banks early infant diagnosis, diagnosis of several STIs diagnosis of TB detection and resistance prognostic markers like CD4 pile load and single equipment and multiple tests can be done on that uh, scheme of prevention of treatment of HIV again lot of things are important and acute HIV infection can be now treated because you can diagnose early, wire load is done, blood resistance can be done. And nowadays there are mobile units in big cities where people cannot uh, leave their workplace and go to uh, ICTC and spend the whole day. You can have mobile setup. In mobile clinic, a lot of things can be done, including wire load. So if you look at point of care, uh, uh, this kind of point of care we are not. Uh, including the spot test but all other uh, important tests they started just 5-6 years back and they have almost captured the whole world so if you look at same day testing of CD4 same day testing of uh, early infant diagnosis 
uh, same way testing of viral load. So all this could be achieved, and the impact is basically improved patient care on one hand. In the public health, uh, uh, prevention of transmission on the other hand. So if we can change the mobile technology from such a public mobile phone to a very small, cheap kind of phone, why can't we uh, uh, change our mindset for that? Thank you. Society of India he is a well known infectious disease specialist. He belonged to Christian Medical College, uh, well known. Now he is uh, dean of two medical colleges, Apollo Medical College here in Hyderabad and another one in uh, Telangana. And he has been a uh, well known voice for infectious diseases, including HIV, TB. Good morning and thank you very much for the kind introduction. And uh, I'll just limit, I'll skip a few slides which Dr. Gelada has already mentioned. I stand here as the dean because what I need to tell people is that we've got to get, we have about 600 medical, 560 medical colleges in the country, half of them private, half of them in the government sector. And we need to have more medical colleges involved in ART care, in the HIV care. And the third private medical college in the country having an ART center provided by NACO. The problem is that uh, we have to teach the mainstream ambiguous doctors <coughs> about HIV simply because when they go for and I'm also of the opinion that if you have this medical college consortium, then you will have the mainstream ambiguous doctors going out into the primary health care system. Today we need universal health coverage and the primary health tech, the primary health centers should be manned by these doctors who are trained and they should also incorporate HIV care. But having said this, I go into this, we have all heard about the definition of 1990. The purpose of my presentation here is not to blast la NACO to say that we taxpayers are the cost of it, or the civil society has not been participating. It's not to blame anybody. It's for us to have an awareness that we are very close and we can re re reach the 100, 100, 100 targets. But what we really need to understand is, look at certain gaps that are occurring. Even though when we are testing and treating people, 30% of them, there is a pre-treatment loss. Why is this happening? Is it because that we are not holding on to these patients and then taking, taking them over to the... And taking, yeah, and taking them over to the centers. So this, this is something that we have to really look at. Now, first hundred, the first to knowing your HIV status. Now you need to have creative approaches. It can be facility based or it can be community based. We've also looked at, you know, these are some of the see these are some of the aspects that we can look into. Standalone voluntary testing and counseling center. Problem is the person needs to know of something about the illness, otherwise knowing the status itself and if they do not have supportive care, it could be a disaster. Now, when do we, everybody wants even evening clinics for general medicine to be started in the evening? Because people are working late, but we, otherwise they will lose a day's employment. But do we, can we take them to high risk settings? Schools, workplaces, religious facilities, transport hubs, you know, these are all options available, but do we, do we go all out and search for them? You can test, you can test for triaging. Okay, now once you try them and then you can send them to the major centers. Now, HIV self-testing, I don't know whether the government has approved it or, or not, but still, you know, saliva-based testing, blood-based fingerprint, uh, fingerprint testing, I don't know whether it has come out into the private as such in our country. Now, but WHO insists that these patients should receive pre-test information, otherwise don't um, do these tests and you just heard about decentralized and mobile testing um, strategies. Now, are we involved in partner notification or disclosure or contact tracing? I don't think we are doing that very efficiently, but that is something that we, could, we should do in order to achieve this target of uh, 100. Now, next part, integration of HIV TB program. So as already mentioned that we have so many patients with TB and with HIV, but I know NACO has introduced INH preventive therapy. 
on whom do we give this INH IPT preventive therapy? Now, it's, it's not many many physicians are in the, in, the public, in, the public, in the private sector are not really using it. Now, who are these high, high risk people? Okay, we have man, we don't do the mental tests on them. Should it be universal that everybody should get the INH and so Extra pulmonary TB uh, cases are something which medical colleges see. And uh, you know, do we, they need to be better diagnosed. And uh, this is the only way, and then you can decrease mortality. Yesterday or day for yesterday, the cost of ephampentin has come down. I have not used ephampentin, I've been suggesting, but the cost has, I mean, um, has come down. Perhaps may improve adherence to ART, may also, uh, so that you have lesser drug interaction. Now, achieving, now the third part of it, we need to know HIV prevalence studies. If you look at the various states in India, okay, the coverage, well, we got this National Family Health Survey, but you look at this aspect, lowest in Himachal Pradesh and highest in the northeastern states, okay. Now, even among them, one third have not received the blood result. Why is, why is that happening? So, we need to understand why, what is happening to this is, this is a recent study. A child is surveillance in a high risk area, safe blood transfusion, and we have to go for aggressive educational campaign for healthcare workers and public to, con uh, to continue. And uh, particularly in the high risk population. May not be so much in Jammu and uh, sorry, in Madhya uh, Pradesh, but we really have to hit hard in the Northeast area. Now the next part of it, diagnosis of HIV infection in infants born to HIV positive mothers. We've got a successful implementation and PPTC, PTC, antenatal screening and ER. Early infant diagnosis introduced in our country 2010. Transmission rates have been reduced. Dr. Galera mentioned about zero. There are several small units, institutions mentioning, mentioning saying zero transmission. Even in 2015, 60, 17, 18, but some places are 3.4. But transmission rates have to uh, um, have been reduced significantly. And uh, elimination of mother to child transmission is definitely, definitely possible. Now, this is the problem that we have among, you know, HIV related stigma. What are they worried about? If I am positive, my worry is, I belong to the social distancing or fear of my zero status disclosure. These are my greatest worries, okay? And then, it, particularly in women, we, we see them, it leads to, I'm oh, sorry, to, to the workforce, discrimination and domestic violence, okay? Domestic violence, physical assault, as well as sexual assault, resulting in unsafe sexual practices. And uh, this, this is one aspect that is impacting health-seeking behavior. So we need to continue with our awareness, continue with ways and means of dispelling these, um, you know, uh, 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 thoughts or activities related to this. Now, having said that, now we want to go to the next one, achieving 100% AR. Now, we just heard that, okay, I don't know what the numbers are, 3 million, 5 million, whatever it is. We have about 1.5 million on treatment. So we are, we are there, there's a significant gap. But uh, NACO has uh, done a remarkable job, okay? And uh, if you do so, this trust and treat policy, which is encouraged uh, everywhere, now it, is, it will definitely decrease mean time to receive ART. And Dr. Gilada has also shown it in his previous slide. As I am more worried about the survival rate, the survival rate would also improve if you have this. Now, the, this is the problem, facilitate and increase linkages to care. This is something that we have to do. This is where I'm thinking this micro clinics, informal social networks, peer-based teaching, peer-based uh, you know, counseling, all of these could really help. The third part of it of the 100% viral suppression, of course we need to have improve the patient's adherence to ART. Adherence, you can define it as any, any which way you want it, but I, I, my, my definition would be the person should not have this more than one dose in the previous seven days, okay? Now, who is, can we shift the task to somebody, home business, public health workers, and uh, have, uh, uh, you know, is it uh, a reduction of barriers among vulnerable po population? 
Somebody has to study what are these barriers. Not, it's, I think it's basically result, as a result of stigma. You've got so many communication devices. I used to work with mobile help for TV, okay? But I have not worked with HIV, okay? And uh, also we need to have electronic reminders, text mails, can it be done? And uh, I don't know, I have no experience with di directly administered antiretroviral therapy, the, or modified MDOT, okay? But this requires clinic-based staff training and trained peers observing patients ingesting peer medicines. Now, how do I improve? What is my target? 100% viral suppression and zero transmission? We need this adherence to be improved significantly. I don't know, uh, voucher systems, in fact, my special interest is antimicrobial resistance. I am telling doctors, the best incentive for a doctor not to prescribe antibiotic is to give them an incentive voucher. If you have not prescribed antibiotic, I'll give you some money. <laughs> no, you know, at least, you know, the psychological be behavior in the adolescence, you know, it's totally different. They will have, they'll go through depression. I am seeing it in normal people, anxiety and depression, coping with medical school. So imagine if you, on top of it, you've got an illness of HIV, then substance, uh, substance uh, uh, abuse. I have no experience. I'm a general medicine physician. But I have no experience in, um, in managing substance abuse. Then who is managing? We don't have that many people. And the challenges in discordant couples, we just heard it, okay? Are we making sure that the, the, um, the uninfected remains so? Now, this is the, the last part of my slide, okay? All of the above has, have to continue. And um, all of this are there, but we have to do it very closely. Only then, if you get this 100% viral submission, uh, suppression, you want zero transmission. It is possible. Now, uh, post-exposure post prophylaxis and pre-exposure prophylaxis. Pre-exposure prophylaxis, national guidelines they do not have. Okay, and but it's a very good additional additional biomedical tool and it has been rolled out in several countries. And we need to have good IEC initiatives to increase awareness of PR, that is pre-exposure prophylaxis. I'm not recommending it, but it is something to be considered. But in private, people are doing it. But in public, it is not being done. And finally, we have got several challenges in HIV AIDS. If you look at the other specific, the sustainable the development goals, you know, there are so many goals, 70. Ten of them are related to HIV. If you do not achieve those ten goals, okay, what is it, what are they? Poverty, hunger, ensuring healthy lives, ensuring quality education, achieving gender equality, those are the goals one to five. Promoting economic growth, that is goal eight. Reducing the inequality, economic inequality, making city, cities safe and resilient, migrant labor, promote peaceful and inclusive societies and strengthen means of implementation. If you've got all of the above but you cannot strengthen the implementation, then you will not achieve it. So I am very hopeful, 2030 is not very far off and I will be hopefully practicing medicine at that time and I want to be one of those people who said, yeah, we did it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, David. Uh, thank you. The next speaker is uh, Dr. Naval Chandra. And, uh, Dr. Naval Chandra from uh, Nizam Institute of Medical uh, Sciences. Uh, he will speak on uh, why 100, 100, 100 and zero new TB transmission are a must to end TB. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. After two very lucid presentations by my uh, senior colleagues from uh, ASI, uh, I'm a clinician, I'm an additional professor in medicine at NIMS, and uh, it's very difficult for a clinician to associate with the public health program and give down some statistics. But uh, when Dr. Gilada sir came to me, you know, approached me and said, uh, would you like to speak on this? I thought it's a very good opportunity. So I've tried to make some uh, basic uh, slides 
it's a very, very big topic uh, uh, to believe. But uh, I'll try and make it as simple as possible. And uh, apologies if there are any wrong, uh, you know, percentages or any uh, uh, any other stats which have been wrongly quoted by me. Otherwise, so my talk is basically divided into five sections. The first section is on key T defects. Well, we all aware there are about 10 million people who fell ill with TB in 2017, including 0.9 million people living with HIV. TB was one of the top 10 causes of death worldwide in 2017 and was responsible for more deaths than HIV. In 2017, 1.6 million people died from tuberculosis, including 0.3 million among people with HIV. Globally, in 2017, an estimated 5,58,000 people developed TB that was resistant to BIF, the most effective first-line drug. And of these, 82% had multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. So what are the achievements? What are the challenges? Well, achievements, we have come a long way. 54 million people, lives saved between 2000 and 2017. There's been a 33% drop in TB deaths between this particular period. What are the challenges ahead? Definitely, you would agree, MDR-TB crisis, Gaps in detection and treatment, only one in four people needing MDRT TB treatment were enrolled on it. There's a huge funding gap to the tunes of billions of dollars, both for implementation of the program and TB research. Transmission of tuberculosis, we're not going to go into too much of depth. We know the explanations, the cascade of transmission of this dreaded disease. Probably four major factors contributing. One is susceptibility based on the immune system or the status of the exposed individual. Second, the infectiousness, that is the number of tubercul bacilli he or she expels into the air. And a third being the environment, which has certain factors that affect the concentration of this organism. And lastly, exposure, that is proximity, frequency, and duration of the exposure. Section three, the NTB strategy. Well, what is it that this strategy, uh, you know, we tend to evolve over? There is a vision, a world free of tuberculosis, contributing with zero deaths, disease, and suffering due to TB. Goal, end the global tuberculosis epidemic, and the indicators. So, the strategy involves certain milestones to look forward to and certain targets going all the way up to 2035. So, when compared to 2015, we hope to have a 35% decline in the reduction number of TB deaths, going on to 75% in 2025, 90% by 30, and 95% by 35. I know these are very boisterous goals, but unless we have goals in place, we can't work towards these. Reduction in TB incidence rate compared to the previous, a uh, redu reduction of 20% by 2020, 50% by 2025, 80% by 2030 and going on to 90% by 2035. TB affected families facing catastrophic costs due to TB percentage. We definitely need to zero in on this right from the next year. So it has to be zero, 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 zero all over through. Well, again, giving you a basic uh, incidence rates of global tuberculosis uh, incidence. If you can see, if we look at the global uh, current global trend uh, where we are going down minus 1.5% every year, we will end up still having about 80, 80 per 100,000 per year at the end of 2035. Whereas if we have certain strategies in place, this is what we want to achieve, where we have a minus 17% per year at the end of 2035. Coming to the implement implementation of the NTB strategy, simple ABC to implement the NTB strategy in our countries, First, the advocacy, advocate for and achieve. It needs a very high level political commitment. It has, a, it has to have a multi-sectoral collaboration and a very high level mechanism to direct the adaptation and implementation of the strategy. Baseline preparedness, assess the TB situation, know your epidemic, current status of the response and health system capacity, and also policy and regulatory environmental factors. Coordination and co collaboration are the most important uh, 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 you know, uh, strategies. It uh, requires you need to collaborate and coordinate across all relevant ministries, 
and departments such as health, finance, education. I'm sure the stalwarts sitting here would agree with this. Uh, in fact, the food department, the social welfare department, justice, labor, transport, and migration. So, home, so many ministries. You know, it's not easy in, in our clinical, in our country, in our settings. But uh, this is where we need to achieve, and this is where we need to work with. And we need to collaborate and co collab uh, coordinate with patients affected communities and civil societies, with the private sectors, and also with national and international supporters and partners. Well, coming on to the integrated patient centered care and prevention, what are the four key components? First, early diagnosis of TB, including the universal drug susceptibility testing and systematic screening of contacts and high risk group. Second, treatment of all people with TB, including drug-resistant TB and patient support. C, collaborate with uh, collaborative TB and HIV activities and management of comorbidities. And lastly, preventive treatment of persons at high risk and vaccination against tuberculosis. The three tires of the network of TB labs, what we have, uh, so if you look at the screening, the referral departments working at the community level, we have the sphere for microscopy, the gene expert micro at MTB and the RIFSAs. Moving on to the you know, regional uh, district levels, we have other than these two, the culture of solid media and the LPA from AFP positive sputum. And then moving on to the final central level, other than these four, we have the liquid cultures, the DSTs, including for second line drugs, the LPA on positive cultures, and the rapid spe uh, speciation tests. So these are the tests offered at each level. Who is supposed to be screened? Primarily contacts of people with a TB, people living with HIV, workers exposed to silica dust should always be systematically screened for active tuberculosis. Other, for other risk groups such as national or local tuberculosis based on epidemiology, health system capacities, resource availabilities and the feasibility of reaching those groups. Both policies and uh, supportive systems are the four primary main key components. First being the political commitment with adequate resources for TB care and prevention. Second, being engagement of communities and society organizations and all public and private care providers. Third, being universally healthcare, universal health care coverage policies and regulatory homework for case notification, framework for case notifications, vital registries, quality and national use of medicines and infection control. Lastly, social protection, poverty alleviation and actions on other determinants of TB. Well, finding India's missing TB cases, uh, if you just go through this graph, I think uh, the left side shows the TB cases per 100,000 population. And uh, if you look at 2013 to 15 quarterly uh, data, you will see that there is a significant increase uh, more so in the private sector than in the public. Coming to intensified research and innovations, Key, th key actions, primarily discovery, development, and rapid uptake of new tools, interventions, and strategies. And secondly, research to optimize implementation and impact, and promote innovations. But what are the key steps in developing and implementing a national TB research plan? There are primarily six major steps. I don't think you'll be able to see this very clearly, but I'll just read it out. First, establish mechanisms for collaboration between all stakeholders at national and international levels, the development of a national TB research network. Second, develop country-specific TB research priorities based on the current TB epidemic on assessment of the national health system and research capacity, and an understanding of what is needed to achieve the WHO NTB strategy targets by 2030-35. Plan for relevant training and sustainable capacity building including resource researchers and research career development from an early stage and ensure adequate funding is provided for training infrastructure and research operations step five needs to be throughout advocated for public support and funding of tb research this step must be initiated early and continued throughout all phases of the plan and lastly 
establish mechanisms, milestones, and indicators for ongoing monitoring and evaluation of the implementation of the TB research plan. Well, what are the challenges to end TB? Firstly, you would agree, right now we have a 9.6 million estimated population with TB, whereas only 6 million have been notified. This has been taken by, from the WHO. And out of this 10 countries account for 75%, about 2.7 million of the estimated misses, missed cases globally, out of which India and Indonesia together account for about 1.2 million missed people. So I think this is where we also, we face major challenge. The second, of course, you would agree MDR-TB. There's an increase of 3% of new TB cases globally. Percentage of new TB cases with MDR-TB, highest percentage was in the former USSR countries. India, China, Russia, Pakistan, and Ukraine have about 62% of all MDR-TB cases. Coming to the NTB strategy, you need to have a universal DST. You need to have universal health coverage, including access to drugs, high quality patient care, uh, patient friendly care, and social protection. Special focus on vulnerable and hard to reach groups should be in place. Challenge three, poverty and poverty and poverty. Our country is always, uh, you know, where poverty is a major problem and uh, it's a vicious cycle. Once you have poverty, you have undernutrition, poor housing, uh, incidence of HIV, other non-communicable diseases, and poor healthcare access leading to tuberculosis. And once you have tuberculosis, resulting in high direct and indirect healthcare costs, loss of employment and income, and on average 50% of annual income is lost. So it's like a vicious cycle. Coming to action plan. So what's the action plan towards elimination? Broadly, uh, you know, in eight uh, points. Firstly, you need to ensure uh, political commitment, funding, and stewardship for planning and essential services of very high quality. Address most vulnerable and hard to reach groups. Address special needs of migrants, cross border issues. Undertake screening for active TB and latent TB infection in high risk groups and provide supportive treatment and appropriate treatment. Fifth, optimize prevention and care of drug-resistant tuberculosis. Sixth, ensure the continued surveillance and program uh, monitoring and evaluation. Seventh, invest in research in new tools. And lastly, support global TB prevention, care, and control. Coming to zero new infections, ages old TB challenge of TB is its ability to cause a quite infection without making that person actually sick. For some people, disease develops years later, allowing the TB outbreak to span generations. TB programs can interrupt this transmission by diagnosing every case of latent TB and every case of active TB disease. People with TB need affordable, accessible POC diagnostic tests to detect TB and drug resistance in household and communities. We need to scale up availability of promising new rapid diagnostic tests by making them affordable and accessible, especially also in areas where electricity is lacking. A, tr a true instrument-free, non-electric and cold chain dependent POC test is probably the need of the art to diagnose all forms of TB in adults and children, regardless of TB drug resistance and HIV co-infection. Zero deaths, zero new infections, and zero suffering from TB. There has to be a very strong political will and commitment by governments and communities, active case detection and elimination of TB transmission, family and community-centered care and preventive therapy to block the onward transmission, and lastly, intensify the TB prevention, care, and treatment for women and children, especially who are disproportionately vulnerable. Towards TB elimination by 2015, Beyond the current efforts to prevent detection and cure TB, new tools are needed to radically transform the fight against TB and seriously target elimination by 2050. When transmission of new infection is successfully cut with quality case detection and treatment, most TB cases will arise from remote infection. Protecting latent infect, latently infected people from progressive, progressing towards active TB will be crucial. 
and development of simpler tools to detect latent infections and safer and more effective interventions to prevent disease are therefore necessary. Therefore, the ideal vaccine is one that protects both against initial infection and development of a disease given infection. So working towards elimination, less than 100 cases, all forms per million is a low incidence. We need to work towards less than 10 cases, all forms per million, pre-elimination by 2035 and hopefully by 2050, less than one case, all forms per million, uh, you know, labeling it as elimination. So our target on treatment, 100%, 100% diagnosed, 100% treated, thus resulting in zero transmission and end the epidemic of tuberculosis. Thank you, one more. Thank you, Noel. Last the next speaker is uh, Dr. Jacob Cresswell. Uh, he is team leader, TB Reach from the Stop TB Partnership. His topic is Prevent TB and TB and AIDS. Dr. Cresswell, please. Thank you, Dr. Chasteva. Um, I, I work at the VC. I work at the partnership, um, and uh, we have we've been working uh, for quite some time on uh, the promotion of preventative treatment. I was told to in the anyway. I can I can do this without slides if need be. Um, the the work around and a number of, of uh, uh, speakers have, have stressed on the importance of, of treatment as prevention uh, and, and, and talked about preventative treatment. But uh, in TB for, for too many years, I think, we focused on only the treatment part, hoping that as we, we at, at, you know, if, if, if you've been working in TB long enough, you'll remember that all we had to do was identify 70% of, of incident TB and we would achieve huge decreases in, uh, in incidents. And obviously that, it took, we, we, we just hit 70% I think this, this year, but uh, it, it hasn't worked out that way. Uh, and, and we know that detecting the old, old case detection targets of, of 70% is, is clearly not enough. And, and, and at, at a number of levels, we knew that just treatment um, wasn't enough years ago. Uh, Chris Dye did a number of modeling exercises um, where, and, and published this, where it was very clear that the biggest impact uh, with the tools we had was when we started doing prevention and doing this on a, on a large scale. And in, uh, in last year at the high level meeting, there was an opportunity globally where the TV community come, came together and said, these are, we want to have, we have global targets for case detection. Uh, we have, uh, but we also will, will have global targets, we have global targets for, for drug resistant TV, but we'll also have global targets for prevention and, and putting people uh, who are infected with TB on treatment. And we, at the partnership, we pushed really hard to have much higher targets. Um, but the targets that, that came out in the, in the high-level uh, meeting declaration, the political declaration, were still well above where we are uh, currently. So the, in, by 2022, we're supposed to put 30 million people uh, as, a, as a global community on preventative treatment. And I think the HIV community is 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 well uh, is the only group that is really uh, has a chance to, to reach the, the, the targets as 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 currently uh, as they're currently constructed. But it's household adult household contacts, child under five contacts, and people living with HIV, right? And and they're sub that they're broken down as well. Uh, uh, Four million child contacts, six million people living with HIV, and and twenty million adult household contacts. So the, this is, you know, by combining the the push through active case finding, through uh, better diagnostics, to reach 
more people with, with active TB disease, but we have to couple that then with uh, a, a push to reach people with TB prevention. Uh, and, and, we, and I think a number of the speakers have also talked about the need for accountability and the reporting on uh, the still right? and the reporting on uh, on on the progress that we've made. Uh, so this is something that all countries, through the accountability framework that WHO is, is is putting together, will be needed to 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 do and to to, to accomplish. We have to, the only way that we're going to push our our countries, our governments, uh, to meet these targets. If, we're actually reporting on them, and, and right now we're not, as a, as a global TB community, we're not we're not doing so well. But but for people living with HIV, for household contacts, this is uh, this is something that has been on in WHO guidelines for 15 years. We've known for uh, 15 years or longer that that uh, intensified case finding among people living with HIV and putting people uh, uh, living with HIV on, on preventative treatment is necessary to have an impact on the epidemic. And most countries have guidelines on, uh, on national guidelines on, on these, but there's very few countries that are actually implementing in a, any kind of systematic manner. And that's another reason why there are very low rates of, of, of initiation at this point. So one of the, the, the main reasons, and, and I think one of the reasons why this session is in the, the Community Connect, is that government's TV programs can't do this outreach alone. They need, uh, they need the support from, from local organizations, from community organizations, to do the outreach, because most of the, the work starts with household contact investigation. And the, the best way to do household contact investigation is through active case finding and active outreach. And the best, often the best uh, groups that are, that are placed to do this work are our local community groups. Uh, with HIV, for screening with HIV, it's often uh, facility-based. But more and more with the, the test, and treat, test and treat strategies, is something that is is, uh, is can be community based, and there have been some nice slides talking about uh, the approaches that, that the HIV community has, and that's certainly something that that uh, as a TB community we can learn from. Being able to make quick decisions and saying this person we're ruling out active TB, but we're ruling we're we're going to decide to make a a, a initiate that person on treatment for for TB infection is something that uh, we as a TB community can do a much better job and have a much greater impact in terms of early detection uh, and, and early treatment as, as, as many of the speakers have, have talked about. So I think the, 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 the message that we need to think is moving from a, a reluctance to uh, do the, the, the screening among people who don't have active disease. That's something that, again, all speakers have, have highlighted, but it's, it's a very critical step uh, to move from the mindset that we're really focused on, uh, on uh, active case finding. There's, there's not a lot of signs left at this point. <laughs> Um, so I, I think this is the this is the, the probably if you can if you can see the most important slide for for me taking uh, taking this idea of moving out of our comfort zone from from treating sick people to treating people with no symptoms because we want to impact the the, the epidemic from focusing on on TB clinics uh, to working with uh, communities with, in, in households outside of just TB clinics, working with the, the HIV clinics, and, and, and thinking about other, other areas like workplaces or, or, um, or other areas. 
from ruling in TB as active disease to ruling out active TB to put people on, on preventative treatments. And then we also clearly need to think about uh, uh, better tests and, and the idea of, of uh, blood-based tests for, as opposed to uh, just sputum, which is notoriously difficult to work with. Uh, active case finding I've mentioned before. Um, and we have, and I, I think uh, maybe the, the, the discussions and the protests that maybe you hear right now are focused on the lambda, but uh, we, we, we had a, a potentially really impressive great new regimen that initially cost uh, $70, was knocked down to $40, and just this, this week the announcement came at $15 for, for a treatment course of 3HP. Now that's, that's certainly helpful, but we need to go, if we're going to really hit the huge numbers that, that, that uh, as, a, as a TB community we are, we are aiming for, $15 plus size and acid um, uh, on top of that is, is still too much. And the, and the LTBI tests are even more. So the, the, it, it is not feasible to do this at, at the scale given the, the, the costs. Um, we are making progress, and I, again, I said, if you if you look in the in the at, the at the data we have, and this is a year old, but uh, the HIV community is is clearly uh, ahead of the TB community in um, in putting people on on preventative treatment. So there's 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 been a uh, a large there's been a jump in in in. Uh, both contacts, adult contacts, and people living with HIV, but clearly the biggest jump has been among people living with HIV. Uh, but we, there's, there's still plenty of room for, for improvement. And I, I think that one uh, message that we're pushing quite strongly from the partnership is as, you know, we have some very successful global fund replenishment, and there, in another month, there will be the the funding envelopes for each country will will be uh, provided for for the, the new funding cycle. Or I'm not, I can't remember what the the, uh, the the correct terminology is for the, the global funds next cycle, but the 2021-2023 cycle. Uh, and this is the biggest opportunity that we have now to put in interventions that put more people. Excuse me. That are. That are, that are able to test and put more people on, on preventative treatment. The strategic initiative for TB, which India has been a, a, a part of for the last three years, but it, it focuses on 13 highest burden TB countries, is now expanding to 20 countries, and those 20 countries will be encouraged to include uh, preventative treatment uh, in their funding requests and get extra matching funding for, for TB, uh, MDRTB, and, and preventative treatment. And HIV, the HIV uh, funding will have a specific focus as well on preventative treatment and a strategic initiative that provides extra funding just for people with this catalytic funding, just for people with, uh, people living with HIV. So it's, it's a real opportunity for, for countries to get global funds, which I think is done very little support for preventative treatment um, in, into the new funding requests. So just uh, quickly to, to conclude, in order to make a, a impact epidemiologically and move that 1.8% that, that was shown in the last presentation down to a, a much steeper decline, we, we, without a vaccine, we have to scale up massively preventative treatment. And in most countries, policies are in place. They've been in place for, for quite some time on, with children and people living with HIV, uh, but not really for household contacts. And across the board, the implementation of these policies is generally very poor. Uh, we have high-level political commitment and an opportunity with the NTP strategy, with the new global plan, Stop TV Partnerships global plan coming out, uh, with a new global fund funding cycle. These are all 
uh, good political and financial opportunities to change the, the way that we're currently working. And, and we have country-specific targets, uh, if, if countries are interested, um, that are based on the UN High Level uh, targets on the Stop TV website. And we need to have a collective push, not just from, from governments, but from uh, the civil society uh, to not only implement, but also keep uh, the, the TV and HIV programs uh, accountable. So thank you very much. Uh, We have some uh, time, so if there are any questions or comments, uh, please be most welcome. Why, oh yes sir, Professor Surikant from uh, Department of Respiratory Medicine, he had said in King George's Medical College uh, and uh, also has been the President of Indian Chess Society, National College of Chess Physicians and Indian College of uh, Asthma and Energy. Only one mic please. It's a wonderful session. Uh, you see, uh, just to give you the Indian scenario, the latest uh, national drug resistance survey conducted uh, from 2014 to 16, this shows resistance to isoenergic in 16% population of tuberculosis, 11% in new cases and 25% cases in previously treated cases. In this scenario, Will isoniazid preventive therapy will be effective in such scenario? What's your opinion? So I, I think that there, there are two things. Um, one is that uh, the studies that, that have been done, even in high, uh, even in higher drug resistance scenarios, have shown quite a bit of impact. Uh, in in Soviet Union countries, uh, this is. There's, there's a much higher drug resistance, uh, and and the the the, the studies that, that I've uh, been aware of have, have shown actually a continued impact. There's always going to be a risk, but the way that that uh, because not everyone with uh, 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 infection will develop TB, and you're treating massively the the numbers of people that. Could possibly be treated insufficiently is, uh, is is not too large. But the other thing that is actually interesting, and I think WHO guidelines came out recently, uh, or not too recently, but 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 uh, a year or so ago, is that there is now a movement and thinking that uh, and some evidence, and quite a bit of evidence, that treating uh, with a uh, fluoroquinolone, uh, oh, there's a number of different regimens. But looking more towards treating uh, infection for people who are contacts of, of, of people with drug resistant TB as a, a useful option. And, and again, early data, especially uh, from, from Russia, has shown that this is actually having a really large impact, even at a small scale, on the incidence of, of drug resistant TB. So I think, well, it's certainly a concern that because of you're talking about uh, a large scale, the, the impact is still going to be very high. I don't know if other other have comments. Any other comments? No. I think when we talk about uh, masses, even if 15% are resistant, it will benefit to the remaining 85% of people. So that is the strategy. It's, it's uh, if reformatin comes up, reformatin, isoniazid, uh, one cervix therapy for 12 weeks, that will be easier, uh, less toxic, uh, and doable. So once that is licensed, then that will be one of the first one. Yes. Any other comment, questions in English, Hindi? Maybe there's more translation. Telugu, I see you, sir. <laughs> All right, one of the questions, maybe I'll take on some liberty. Oh, uh, probably Jacob and uh, Dr. Naval or uh, Dr. Dilip, please uh, guide me. Like, what, sir, uh, when we talk of latent tuberculosis infection, we are talking of uh, healthy, seemingly healthy people who do not probably perceive themselves at risk of tuberculosis. It could be me also, 40% chance, chance of latent TB and obesity and other. So how do you, how do, uh, how do we convince health, uh, people to go for uh, latent TB testing, also contact? Right now, the reality is we are missing 30% of cases active TB disease. 
So uh, of course we have to go for latent, addressing latent TB, but how how to encourage contacts uh, and people who are, do not uh, are, have no symptoms for active TB disease to go for latent TB testing, uh, latent TB care, and uh, and what about adherence? And as Dr. Suri Khan pointed out about resistance, um, so that that is definitely a concern. And uh, sorry for this long uh, question and com comment. And one of the concerns is that they've been really trying hard to talk to people who have gone through the IPT therapy and it has been really difficult. So far we only found one person who uh, who has completed 3HP. So we need more stories also people to come out at, uh, and say and uh, you know and build confidence among communities that uh, talk to people is not toxic and there is no uh, resistance. So I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist at all, so just a, just a layman comment. So again, I, I don't need to talk uh, just alone, but uh, from our experience, I, I think one one thing that is is important is exactly what you say that that getting the word out. Um, I mean, if you think back, just the first thing that pops into my head is uh, expert CBNAT use. Uh, at first, WHO came out with relatively conservative uh, guidance, and people were just focusing on uh, testing among people who had high risk of, of drug resistance. And there was, there was uh, it, it takes a mindset change. And I, I think that, that, that you know, there, was, there, was, there were groups who were interested in pushing the envelope a little more. And we just have to, as a community, I think we have to promote this idea of pushing innovation, pushing change. This is not really, it's not really that innovative. It's just pushing a mindset change. And we do have very good experiences, and they're, 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 uh, and some some work that 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 I know of more because we've we've been funding it. But uh, the acceptance for 3HP is often much easier to to uh, convince, but to to uh, get buy-in from the person who's receiving treatment when it's it's presented as a you know a much, you know only twelve only twelve doses and. So we've had, in, in a number of countries, we've had very high uptake, where I, IPT may be 20, 30%, we get, we're getting 70, 80, 90% uptake on, on uh, 3HP. Uh, now it's a lot more expensive, and there's other issues with pill burden and everything else. But I think that the, the clinicians, uh, obviously they have to be convinced, you know, how, how long ago we were talking in, in India, in, in um, you know, with the work that that Mukund uh, Upika was doing around private sector engagement, that was a real mindset shift, and it's now it's taken for granted. But I think uh, that clearly, of course, we have to involve the private sector in TDK. So I think more than anything else, it's convincing ourselves that this is something that that can really have an impact and 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 trying out pushing it. So I think that's it. A lot of it comes from within our as opposed to the HIV community, of what tends to be a relatively conservative uh, TB group. And I've been someone who's working with TB for 20 years, so I can say that. I request Dr. Kuri to pass on a brief uh, conclusive remark. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have uh, heard the presentation of uh, Dr. Gilada and uh, Vice President.
there won't be transmission. Transmission can be reduced to a large extent, but then if if we find out some legal uh, solution to that, that's a very uh, we, if we can find out the legal solution, definitely we can. But there are problems. There are problems of. Uh, uh, Stigma, stigma is associated with it. Ultimately, those who will, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it, it is a, it is after all we have to take care of this. Uh, we have to uh, take care of the the, uh, the the patient or the client. His identity, if he don't want to disclose, we cannot disclose that. So even if we take take up that this issue will not be having much of the use, but definitely we can think. And then a uh, uh, new generation of uh, uh, tests, uh, that may have impact, especially in the blood transfusion. Of course, India cannot afford to have this new generation of uh, HIV for the for uh, uh, antenatal testing. It will be too expensive that we are testing uh, all the antenatal mothers so it will be very uh, although we can reduce the uh, uh, vertical transmission to zero by that but uh, India cannot right now it cannot afford to have that so and uh, contact tracing definitely we have improved and we will further improve it Right now, we have achieved around 50% of contact tracing. We are doing it, and uh, the uh, there was some uh, remarks regarding the voluntary blood donation. Uh, yes, uh, uh, substance abuse. Substance abuse. We are working on that. There is, uh, I mean, uh, I uh, the OSD centers are there. We are uh, we. Those who are uh, uh, intravenous drug users, they are being given uh, oral substitute therapy or uh, OSD. Uh, so, uh, and uh, discordant couples are also being tested at an interval of six months old. Uh, so, they are being and the other precautionary measures are also being told to them. As uh, as far as IPT is concerned, as uh, uh, it is very, I mean, uh, serious thing. If the uh, if it is uh, uh, resistance is so high, uh, then we definitely we have to change the course. I mean, again, we are keeping the uh, in, even in the newer uh, the regime, we are keeping INH in that. Then. Uh, how that will, that is going to help. So that will also be a very problematic. 25% or 15% of the resistance is a big problem. And why it is happening? Because of the IPT, because are we, we creating resistance by giving IPT? Or something has to be, I mean, yeah, if that uh, resistance was found, then something was also found in that study that uh, it was because of the. I would like to go through that study. I have not seen uh, uh, that study. I would like to go through that study. And if uh, I will, uh, then I, I will uh, further uh, take it forward for the. I mean, uh, along with Dr. Sasseva, we will take it forward for the, uh, I mean, uh, if we have to change the course of uh, uh, this uh, I, uh, preventive therapy for the uh, HIV patients, I mean, PLHIVs. So, I mean, PLHIV, those who are not suffering from TB, those who we rule out for the, from uh, on whom we rule out the TB, or other contraindication for uh, preventive therapy, then we have to look into it that what should be the alternative. If that is uh, 
because this sense is so much, then seriously we have to think over it. Thank you and uh, thank you once again to all the uh, uh, presenters and the then 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 it is uh, good of thanks or whatever you know we it's your privilege. So. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> thanks a lot for uh, to the people who are here in the room. We know that there are so many sessions happening. And we also know that uh, there was a, a field trip which happened at 10.15. So thank you that you prioritized. My special gratitude to the frontline uh, people who are working here and fighting TB at the, uh, in Hyderabad, in Teladana. So we have uh, Swami Reddy ji who is uh, here. He, uh, and we visited uh, his centers. Uh, he was also supported by LACRA. And they are doing amazing, very inspiring work. And uh, Swami ji, for the first time I saw, uh, and of course my interaction at at the grassroots is little to see a mixture tablet right there being used the real time data was being fed which was probably reaching RFPC which was really amazing. So all hats off to the people who are fighting on the ground, people who are influencing policy change here. Uh, we, uh, so thank you so much. This session was organized by Aid Society of India. We are grateful for the union to give us this space uh, and uh, PHO, People's Health Organization and CNS. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.